addition part after you get rid of your parentheses. Now let's just combine your like terms. Of course, that's going to give us how much? Negative x Yeah, we definitely don't want to forget about that negative. I see this minus 4x. Are there any other like terms with that minus 4x? So notice I'm going for the 4x, that minus 4x next, because I want them in order. I want my numbers to come last. Then I have this 1. I try to hide out there. And that minus 4, that's going to give us? And that's as far as you can go. That's your answer right there. Can you can you combine any of these things? No, they're not like terms. So you're done. Let's go about this, try to do it the same way. Firstly, you should all know at this point, do any, do any of these terms inside my first parentheses change at all? Yeah. Not unless there's something out front, which we don't have anything. We haven't for the past several examples here. So we're still going to be left with a 4x squared minus 20x. Do any of the terms inside my second parentheses change? Yes. Yes. Yeah, in fact, every single one of them. All this is going to do, since that's a, a negative 1, it's going to essentially just change all the signs. Let's just make sure we have this right. So that's like a negative 1. We'll distribute it to all three terms. So let's do this together. What's our negative 1 times negative 6x squared? How much are you going to get? So what are you going to write down here? Are you going to do this? Just write 6x squared like that? No. No, there's got to be a sign in between there, doesn't there? So if we're getting a positive 6x squared, don't just write positive 6x squared. That positive should translate to a plus for you. So negative times a negative gives us a positive. We write a plus. What's next? Negative 2x or positive 2x? Positive 2x. So we'll write a plus 2x. And lastly, everybody, what are you going to write last, please? Negative 13. So that means minus 13. After that, combine some like terms. We're, we should be pretty good at that point. I'm seeing a 10x squared. I've got a negative 18x, so I write minus 18x. And lastly, that minus 13 is hanging on to the back end there. That's as far as we can go. That's completely combined. We've just subtracted two polynomials from one another. Are you ready to try three on your own? Okay, here's your chance. So I'll be walking around. If you need help on this, let me know. I'll help you out.
So we're dropping parentheses if we can. We're distributing negatives if we have to. Changing signs if we need to. Then combine like terms because that's definitely a must. seconds and we'll go over this in class. So first one, we got 9y plus 8, it's our polynomial, minus another polynomial, 11y minus 20. What we've got to realize is that the first parentheses in every single case really aren't going to change much. There's no number out front. We look for it, right? We look for any negatives or, or a number, and if we had one, we would have to distribute it. But there's none in either case, so we get to drop those. So that's going to be the same thing. And this one's going to be the same thing. And this one's going to be the same thing. However, those minuses right there, subtracting those polynomials, it says that basically you have to subtract every term in the parentheses. What that means is you're going to have to distribute it. So that negative, it really stands for negative 1, and we're going to multiply that by every term inside. So negative 1 times positive 11y is going to give you negative 11y. If you ever get a negative, you're going to write a minus. That's how we associate that, because you could write it plus negative and change that to a, a minus sign. That's our, our idea. So minus 11y and then a negative 1 times a negative 20. We know that a negative and negative is a positive, so we're going to write a plus 20. After that, it's just combining like terms. You've got to be able to identify those like terms, add or subtract their coefficients depending on the addition rule. And write it in order. Would you raise your hand if you get negative 2y plus 28? Good job. All right, that's great. Okay, next up, same thing happens. Here we're going to get our negative 15x squared, but we're not going to have plus 4x anymore. That negative is going to change that sign to a minus 4x. And that's really the key part, is the second part in, in those parentheses. The first one, everyone's going to be getting that one, right? That's the one you need to focus on. Our like terms, we'll get negative 4x squared. I see a few x's. But that 2 doesn't have any other numbers. So I write negative 4x squared plus 3x plus 2. Did you get that one? All right. Last one, last one. Kind of tricky. We've got a couple signs going on that are right next to each other. Just stick with it. Go term by term. We know this negative times a negative is going to give us a, a what? <clears throat> so we're writing plus. Negative times a positive gives us a negative. So we write minus. And we know a negative times a negative again gives us positive. So we write plus. That's how you change every one of those signs. After that, combine your like terms. Don't just leave it, you gotta combine your stuff, right? You got make sure it's as simple as possible. We got 4y squared. We got 4y. Yeah, lots of fours, plus four. Show of hands, how many people feel okay adding and subtracting these things? Good, so adding is pretty straightforward. You just drop the parentheses. Subtracting, you've got to watch your signs. Make sure that you're changing those second parentheses normally is what happens. The last thing we're going to talk about is evaluation. Do you remember what evaluate means? That's a plug in or fill in. And yeah, solve. plug in a number. Plug in a number, find me an answer. That's, that's basically what we got there. So if I say this for evaluation, If I say that for evaluation, could we figure that out? 
What's our first step? Plug in the three. Okay, so without doing any math in our head, we're supposed to plug in that three. The math in the head thing, that, I mean, that messes us up when we're dealing with exponents and large numbers. So plugging in the three, or substituting that in, should say two times three cubed, because our y's are three. That three doesn't change, plus six times three squared, minus 13. So everywhere we had a y, we're now writing the three. Are you okay going from this step to this step? Okay, so same exact thing, right? This means two times, so we have two times. Six times, six times. The only difference is y is now our three. Now the key is you've got to remember your order operations. That's what we covered at the beginning of class to make sure you did this appropriately. So the question I have for you is, on this step, are you supposed to multiply first or do your exponents first? Exponents. exponents. Good. So I'm not going to do 6 to the third. I'm going to do 3 to the third and then multiply by 2. How do you know not to put 3, um, like 23 instead of 3 to the third power? Because that's a multiplication. You're multiplying there. So the, the 2y cubed means 2 times y cubed. It says you plug the 3 in for the y, but that, that operation of exponents comes before any multiplication. So the 2 is being multiplied by whatever expression you get right there, and that's how you know. So we do our exponents first. What is 3 to the third? Is it 9? 27. We don't just multiply those, do we? Well, we, we do 3 times 3 times 3. That'll give us our 27. Plus 6 times, what's our, our 3 squared, everybody? 9. Okay, so we'll have 9. Minus 13, we'll hang on to that for a little bit. What comes next? What are we supposed to do? Multiplication. All right, let's do that. You have calculators, right? So take your calculators out if you want, want to. What is 2 times, or if you need to, what's 2 times 27? 54. Plus, what's our 6 times 9? 54. Oh, that's weird. Minus 13. How about 50? And now, now we got addition and subtraction from left to right. So we'll add first because it's come going left to right here. 54 plus 54 gives us how much? 108. And then 108 minus 13 would be? 95. So we can now evaluate expressions with exponents and anything we want, really. Do you feel okay with what we talked about so far today? Raise your hand if you do. Good, all right. That's it. That's the rest of our class on two sheets of paper. All right. You ready to get, get at it? Let's do it. We got two sections left. We got 10.2, which is what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to talk about some properties of exponents what you can and what you can't do with exponents. After that, we'll put it all together. We'll talk about multiplying polynomials, which will deal with everything we've just talked about in these first two sections. So right now, pretty important sections for us. We really got to get down this, these rules of exponents.